All right, well, good morning, Rocky Hill Small Group Facilitators. It is uh, Monday, September 28th at 9.45 a.m., coming to you here live on Facebook and then on YouTube a little bit later. Uh, continuing our series, going through books of the Bible, giving brief introductions to each book. And just a reminder, I give you these videos because I want you to know how the Bible is pieced together and how the different sections are compiled and then how all of those make up the overall message of the Bible. So the purpose of these videos is to give you, as the facilitator, some backgrounds and some helps about the books of the Bible so you can then help the people in your group as they're trying to figure out how many missionary um, trips Paul did, where he was when he wrote what, to whom, and all those things. Okay. So today, we're going to look at the book of Galatians. We started our series in, uh, the Paul, in Paul's letters several weeks ago. Some people call them the Pauline letters, or we just say the letters of Paul. And we're going to look at Galatians today. So, there are 66 different books in the Bible. 66 books in the Bible, 39 in the Old Testament, 27 in the New Testament. Out of those 27 books in the New Testament, 13 of them were written by the Apostle Paul, 13 of the 27. And then out of those 13, uh, Galatians is the first one probably written. So if we look at our timeline of the Bible, Jesus Christ was born in about 4 BC, four years before Christ, okay? Again, the timing isn't quite correct, but that's what it is. So Jesus Christ was born in 4 BC, and then he died in 30 AD, okay? And then uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul, um, he became a Christian in 33 AD, and then this letter, Galatians, was written in 49 AD, so about 19, 20 years after Jesus had died, resurrected, and gone to heaven. But it is the first of Paul's letters to be written, and probably the first New Testament letter written. Out of those 27 books in the New Testament, the book of Galatians and the book of James are probably the first two to be written. A lot of people think, we commonly think, and it makes sense, the Gospels were all written first, and then all the letters got pulled out of the Gospels and written. But in fact, Galatians and James were fun of some of the first to be written, and then First and Second Thessalonians shortly later, um, and then the Gospels, they didn't get written. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, those were written in about the middle 60s. Galatians and James were written in 49 or 50 AD. So this is really early on in our Bible, and that's how uh, things come together. And so uh, the Apostle Paul, he made three different missionary journeys. And if you read the book of Acts, the second half of the book of Acts covers all three of those missionary journeys. And so Paul takes his first missionary journey and he travels through this area called South Galatia, through Galatia in the south. And then in between his first and second missionary journey, he writes this letter back to the Galatians, okay? So there's two views on the date of the book of Galatians. Some people would say the early date, like I'm sharing. Other people would say that it was written later because they believe uh, Paul went to a different Galatia. There's two Galatias in the Bible, which makes it even more difficult to study. Uh, but there's a South Galatia and a North Galatia. Paul goes through South Galatia on his first missionary journey. And then on his second missionary journey, he goes through North Galatia. So um, most likely he wrote to the believers in South Galatia, which he went to first. And that's why we picked the early date because he couldn't have written to North Galatia because he hadn't gone there yet. Okay. So again, if you have a good study Bible, it'll probably um, lay out those two views. Or if you have a commentary, it might just stop, talk about those. But most people, I think, now take the early date, uh, South Galatia early date. So Galatians, a fantastic, amazing book. When I've uh, worked with small group facilitators in the past, usually Galatians is one book. I try to encourage all the groups to cover at one time. And if it's a brand new book, that's the book that I suggest they start with, Galatians. It covers the gospel really, really clearly. It covers grace really, really clearly. It covers justification by faith. We're saved by faith alone in Jesus Christ really, really clearly. It just covers the essentials of the faith super well. And it's a great book that every small group should study and go through verse by verse. And even a brand new group. 
that's the book I suggest they start with. It's uh, six chapters. First three chapters talk about following God's law, God's law. And the last three chapters talk about following, you know, God's son and God's Holy Spirit. So it kind of introduces the law and the purpose and how it was fulfilled. And then now how we live out that through the son and the Holy Spirit as Christians. Okay, so thanks for watching this video. That's a brief introduction to Galatians for you. And we've been going through um, this book by Karen Lee Thorpe, How to Ask Great Questions. I want to read to you a small section in here that I really like. She says um, that there are 10 tips for asking great questions in your small group. And as a small group facilitator, that's your job is to get people to read the Bible and then ask them questions to get them to talk about it. She says you need to pay attention to the details. Some people like to leap immediately into discussing what a passage of the Bible or a chapter of a book means to them personally without examining what it says. Such discussions can quickly lose sight of the topic or passage you're studying. By zeroing in on the details, characters, events, settings, keywords, and phrases, we see things in a text that may alter our preconceptions. Uh, chapter 3 will equip you to dig in those details. Incidentally, some people are all detailed people, right? So there's some people that want to jump right into, well, what does it mean to me? And there's some people that just want to focus on the details, but you need a good balance. She says, incidentally, some people are detail people. They enjoy wading into the minutia and they do it well. When you spot people with this gift, recognize them for it. You can assign them the task of laying out the key details for the group and then thank them for their contribution. With any luck, others in the group will begin to appreciate the value of details and will also begin to ask themselves the important question, what gifts do I bring to this group? So this question touches on the Bible study method that I personally use and I've taught some of you as small group facilitators. Observation, interpretation, application. And she's talking about observation in that book where the first step to Bible study is you want to just simply ask, what does the text say? Observation. Um, who is in the passage? What do they say? Where do they go? What are the places mentioned? Um, who is being talked to? The observations, just the basic essentials, kind of like putting a meal together. Uh, Chuck Swindoll says in his book, Searching the Scriptures, if you're going to, you know, cook a meal, first you got to get all the ingredients together and set aside, and that's observation. You get them all there, and you know what is there, okay? We'll talk about interpretation, what does it mean, and then application, how to apply it in other videos. So thanks again for watching uh, this video on Galatians and a brief facilitator tip. We'll catch you next time for one on Ephesians. Talk to you then.